Welcome back inside Manhattan Basketball. Christian Imel with the head coach of Manhattan Men's Basketball, Steve Massiello. Coach, uh, that wonderful time of the year where it's just basketball, unfortunately now gone as, as the school semester so. starts. Well, schools started up after, did? technically, no, because did it start. got canceled. So, all right, so yeah, one more day. Well, nature. <laughs> yeah, one more day of just basketball for this, for this squad. But this team, as you look at them right now, obviously the, the two road losses, I'm sure you pretty much glad to be done going to Connecticut, considering the, the, the only two losses in college. I want to go back tomorrow, actually. <laughs> Look at the last game against Fairfield. You mentioned before the game that you were a little bit concerned with the mentality. You called it the, the quintessential trap game. Yeah. Ended up with a, a tough loss on the road. What about going into that game made you a little nervous? Um, everything. Mm -hmm. you, you know they're better than 0-6 in the conference. Mm -hmm. You know they're better than what their people's perception is of them. Um, you just played them two weeks ago, and you beat them really good. I think it was 20 plus. Um, you've been playing well. You're going into an environment where there's no energy. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? I'd rather go play on the road in front of 3,000, packed. I, I go into a big arena, no people. It's bad energy. We're an energy team. It automatically deflates you. You put all those criteria together, and basically for Fairfield, it was. The only way they could salvage, um, or one of the ways was to beat the number one team. To their credit, they did it. We talked about it. We spoke about it. We tried to get ready for it. We just couldn't couldn't stop it. Um, and, and give them all the credit. They came out you know, in the first, really last seven minutes of this first half. They, they, they brought it to us, and uh, we couldn't respond. We've talked about it a couple of times. You brought it up. This team having to change their mentality of the hunter to becoming the hunted how much more evident do you use that now? I mean, it's, it's one of those things. You, you can use it all you want, but as a player, you know you're in first place. Mm -hmm. You know you're, at the time, 13 and whatever we were, three, I think. Mm -hmm. You know you're six and one. So you could talk about it, but you, you don't quite get it um, until someone else goes in first place. And, 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 that, and I say this, you know, people were like, oh, you had to be mad. I'm not mad about it because it, it's January. As long as we learn from it. Now, we come, if we get in the same situation again in two weeks and we didn't learn from Fairfield, then that's a major problem for me. But I don't think we've repeated any of our mistakes this year. The GW game, except for four minutes, which was the start of the second half, we came out shooting jump shots. They came in going inside. We've never repeated that mistake again. Mm -hmm. Fordham, we understood that we can't let guys get going from the three-point line, especially early in games. Knockwood, we haven't repeated that mistake again. Quinnipiac, I thought we played really well. I really, really liked us in the Quinnipiac game without George Freeman. I think if we play that way, most of the time you're going to get a win. Quinnipiac is very good that night. Fairfield, our next lesson learned is got to be, well, did you come out ready to go? Did you understand the moment, the sense of urgency, and everything that comes into it? And, and my, I, I talk about it all the time here. You know, everyone says, well, if it ain't broke, don't break it. No. If it's not broke, break it before someone else does and then make it better. And that's what we have to understand. Um, so I, that, that's how I stand on it. It's a good learning experience. I was furious with the guys. Um, I all I've talked about is change, changing everything about ourselves, our ways, our preparation, because we have to stay, stay ahead of the curve. And that's hard to do. You talked a couple weeks ago with Ramel Brown battling a small little bit of the calf thing. You said he didn't really like his energy, although the two defensive rebounds. When you look at him in these last couple of games, how much of it is the injury? How much of it is the mentality thing for Ramel? How much of it is, is just trying to, to get back to being Ramel? Um, well, since the cat's out of the bag, he, he shouldn't have played in the Fairfield game. Mm. Um, he just, and, and it was obvious, he's mm. not himself. Uh, he's had a, 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 he has a serious injury that we have really looked at, and not with the good thing is this week off helped him a lot. Mm -hmm. And he's going to probably play this Friday, so that, that's the good thing. Uh, but going to that Fairfield game, he was sewn together on, mm -hmm. on, on needles and stitches. And, and to credit to Ramel, he wants to be out there. He, nothing wants to keep him out. And that's how all these guys are. But we're a banged up team, mm -hmm. as are most teams this time of year. No excuse. We still should have won the game. Still should have got the job done. But we didn't do it. Um, and, uh, you know, but Ramel's a guy who's been there for us and he battles. But, um, you know, it was, a, it was a tough thing not having him at 100%. Um, but, you know, that, that happens in college basketball and you got you to gotta prepare around it. A lot of talk in the last couple of games for this team has been the play of Mike Alvarado. And one of the things that I think is most impressive about him, it's not just his ability to rebound the basketball, to play well defensively, but he's able to finish with contact more than anything else. And how much does that... He finished by getting fouled. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they don't call it. It's, yes. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I think the referee is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. And, and, and at this point, it, it's he's going to win get hit every single mm -hmm. time. And because he's so strong, they don't call it. And there's contact. I mean, I, some of the calls that went on in that last game were just absurd. Absolutely absurd to me. Um, and Mike Alvarado is one of the strongest kids. He's 6'3", he's 200 pounds, he's all muscle. You hit, you can hit him with a chair, the kid's still going to finish. He's tough as nails. Um, and he's just playing terrific. But that being said, I just had a meeting with him yesterday that everyone's still saying he should average 27. He should average 38 in the three games. If you take, if you look in, take into account his free throw misses and a couple layups each game, his average should have been eight, eight or nine more than what it was. And that's the thing. That's, that, that's what I've been talking about. His assists should have been a little more up than they were. He should have more rebounds than they were. So as well as he's played, I still think he could play better. When you look at uh, Shane Richards, who has, again, the, the interesting part of that I, I look at him, and it's more about this Jasper program than anything else with Shane, is he's already into the top ten all time in three yeah. points made. Yeah. What does he bring to the, not just this team, but to this program as, as a historical perspective? Well, I, I just think any time you bring a, a young man in who can shoot the ball the way he does, um, from one standpoint, in, in a year-to-year game-to-game situation, it's going to keep defense honest, open up the post, and from a strategic standpoint, from, from a program standpoint, you're looking at a guy that had no scholarship offers. Mm -hmm. No one thought he could play at this level. Comes in, we believe in him, gets rookie, co-rookie of the year, and now he's going to go down as one of the most pretty good players who played here, mm -hmm. you know, in, in Manhattan, Louis Flores, Jeff Xavier, you know, and you can go back to the days when Coach Fischel was here and, and all those guys. Um, but he's going to go down as one of the greatest shooters ever, mm -hmm. not maybe only in the history of Manhattan, but maybe in the history of this conference. And it just shows you what hard work and a, someone who has a little chip on their shoulder and, and someone believes in you, what, what's possible. And um, that's what this program is about. This program is about people who want to make statements, who want to show people what they're capable of. We'll give you that opportunity. We talked uh, a moment ago about being the hunted, and you said you, until someone else gets up into first place. But the way this conference is going, who yeah. knows if anybody's yeah. going to. I love watching this and seeing scores. You look at the other night, Friday night, Iona's up 20, yeah. and they end up falling to Canisius. You look at Monmouth, able to get down 20. Uh, da down 20. Down so, 20. Down 20. Yeah. And able to get it, and then you look at a team like Monmouth yeah. getting a buzzer beater yeah. at home and things like that. This, you said it, one to seven, there, there are teams that can what win this. What people game. have to understand, and I know the fans, you guys, <laughs> don't get this. I don't care if it's the NBA, I don't care if it's the Big 12, Big East, ACC, there are no upsets in the month of January. Everything goes in January because players are beat up. It's the hardest grind there is. The beginning of the year, everyone's excited. The middle of the year is when January really is the tough time because you can't see the light. When you get to February, once that Super Bowl gets here in football, you kind of know the lights <laughs> at the end of the tunnel. We're, we're, you know, you're getting down that final stretch and conference tournament plays around the corner. January's tough, and it's tough to come out every night and play at a certain level. And that's why you see in every conference great parity. You see teams like Ohio State fall to Minnesota, gets mm -hmm. a great win the other night. Uh, you know, there, you, you see upsets happening all the time. Miami Heat, I believe, lost three in a row yeah. last week. It, it, this is a tough time to play basketball, and you have to understand it. Monmouth, like you said, knocks off uh, um, uh, mm -hmm. uh Maris got Canisius this month. It, it happens. Iona goes to Quinnipiac. It, it's, it's just that's what goes on. Rankings are out the window. Then you kind of realize what you did wrong, what you did right. You regroup come February, and you try to make this final stretch run and get where you want to be. And, and we understand that. And I'm, I'm not going to get too up. I, I, I've said all year, I don't care about our record. I don't care about our standings. Um, I care about our product. Our product has been very good, 13 out of 17 games. Pretty good numbers. Uh, four games, I didn't like our product. The other 13 I did. I thought we were good enough to win this thing. We'll see what happens. We've got to continue to stay on that road. You asked, Coach, for a little bit more juicy uh, fan questions, and we have one that I, I, I kind of like, and if you don't mind, after your answer, I'd like to answer this one as well. Who is the biggest napper on napper. the team? Napper, Rasheen Davis. <laughs> okay, so we're on the same page then. Rasheen Davis, no doubt about On the team, probably Mike. Yeah. Mike loves to sleep. Mike Mike wants to sleep. You know, if he could walk and sleep, he would. <laughs> Mike's a big sleep guy. He's got to be up there. But, uh... That's a good question. Yeah, I would have to say Mike Alvarado probably be the, the top. Okay. top okay. Rasheen is also a guy. Can, and then Rasheen will wake up in the middle of it, though, <laughs> and know what's going on, which is impressive. Yes. If you have a conversation, you'll wake up and know the conversation that's happening, which is, which is pretty impressive. Thought the best one. But in fairness to Rasheen, he has a, a newborn. Yes. So I don't know how much sleep he's getting. Tonight. He probably gets the most on the yeah, bus yeah. on the bus rides. The best, for me at least, we were going to Quinnipiac this year, and as we're getting off, he says, you know you're snoring loud when you wake yourself up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was Coach Davis yeah, yeah. in this one. As you look forward for this team, a uh, few days off, 
uh, in terms of between games, obviously. Friday at home, a nationally televised game against a Ryder squad that uh, I know you love when media guys do this. And for me, as a media guy, a dark horse in this conference coming into Dratty Gymnasium. Yeah, I, you know. You guys have all these tons of <laughs> that I don't think, I, I, and I don't think we beat Ryder here since I've been here. I don't think we've right. ever won. I think Ryder's beat us all times here. Uh, I don't look at them as a dark horse. I look at there's 10 teams that are trying to knock off Iona. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we're all dark horses except for Iona. Um, that being said, they're very talented. They shoot the ball very well from three. They have a great combination with, with guys like Stewart. I mean, he's just terrific and, and can really, really go. Um, and, you know, he, God who's all league and they hurt you in a variety of ways. They have a great inside outside combination. They can throw it in, they can get it from the perimeter. Their guards are great off the bounce. They can hurt you in a variety of ways. Um, and they want to get up and down, they can score the basketball. And that's something we have to be ready to stop. Um, and hopefully uh, our guys will be ready. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough weekend for us. It's a very difficult weekend. Um, and you look at you look at what we have. Luckily, we're at home, but we got to be ready to play. Talking about the difficult weekend, obviously, Ryder and then Quinnipiac on Sunday as well. I know a lot of fans are looking towards Quinnipiac here at home because of the way the game ended out up there. Mike, or excuse me, George leaves after five minutes. Uh, right there, four. rebounding wise. Four minutes. Okay, uh, a stat sheet that I saw said no, five. But four. Four stats. That, that stats. Guy yes. Uh, so you know who does stats? Have you ever seen people who do stats? I have. How much do you think some of those stats? Are <laughs> some of them are a little quirky. Would be the best way I, I think. I think would be just to, to say it. Nothing against that guy. <laughs> no. Some of the people that are in charge of the, the livelihood of basketball is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling, but that's, that's you know, awesome. To have these two games at home, yeah. how big is that? It's big. Mm -hmm. uh, it's big, but it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I like it. I like being home, but I, I also like being on the road. I mean, I, I really don't care where we play. Uh, and I mean that. I just care if we're healthy. I mean, if we're healthy, I'll play anywhere. Put me up anywhere. Put our team anywhere if we're healthy. Get, just give me a healthy team and... I don't care if we play every game on the road. I mean, that's truly how I feel. Uh, I get a kick out of it. You know, the teams are, you know, the way they, when they beat us, they act like they knocked off the, uh, you know, 86 Celtics or something. But, you know, great. National televised game, though, on Friday night, ESPNU for this team. In terms of where, so we talked about this last year. Your first year here, you no TV. beg to, no, to they wouldn't put us on. think about it. They and said, no, they said two teams right. were not allowed to be on national TV. Manhattan as well. And then your second year, what was it, was nine yeah. television this games? This year we lead the conference among the top televised teams in the mid To be able to have that for this program in yeah. just three years, yeah. it's, it's, it's got to be something you take pride in. Oh, I take a lot of pride in mm -hmm. It's our product. You know, and it says, I think it says a lot about these young men and these kids and everyone. And I mean this from the athletic director to social AD to our marketing department to our PR department to the job. Uh, Pete's done. You, you know, it's, we really, I think, have raised the level and raised the bar of what we what we want here, and I think you look at us, I mean, it, it, it should be kind of Friday Night Jaspers, I mean, mm -hmm. because we're on ESPN basically the next, I think, the next three out of yeah. four Fridays, and we come back, and we're back out of an SNY. So we're getting, uh, and I get a kick out of it, the teams want, when they play us, they're, they, they want their TV game to be against us, which is, which is <laughs> it's a compliment to where the program is, you know, and I, and I like it, and, and it's good. We haven't done well on SNY, so I'm looking at, uh, you know, barring them, but, I'm <laughs> good. but it is, it's a, it's a great opportunity to get your product and your brand out there, what you stand for kids are about and let people just see how good some of these guys are. And realistically, this is going to be the first time since George Washington that the sixth borough, the student section, yeah. is going to be back in full force now that they are all back on yeah. campus. Yeah, no, I'm excited about it. I mean, obviously, that, that was a big part of our success last February uh, in January when we kind of got things rolling here, and they were a major, major part of it. And, um, you know, we need them. They're a mm -hmm. big part. And that's, that's why I said on my plan on the road, because the sixth borough travels. Yeah. Now that they're back, six borough rolls with us. We'll go anywhere. As you look for this rider contest, what have been some of the biggest things in, that you will continue to work on this week in practice? You know, right now, I, you know, and you saw a little bit of practice today. I'm, I'm just, you know, we're gonna we're gonna make sure our competitive juices are flowing mm -hmm. one way or another. I'm gonna bring it out now. Uh, I don't know what the outcome is gonna be, but I know we're gonna be ready. Uh, and I don't say that as anything too dry. I just know what I want from this team. I'm gonna make sure come game time uh, because I knew what I wanted from the team going to Fairfield, but I didn't do a good enough job of making sure it was there. When that game started, and I got to make sure it's there when this game starts. And, and um, so we're gonna have some competitive practice, as you saw, um, really get after it. Um, and we're getting kind of our roster expanding and getting healthier in numbers and getting our bodies back. But um, you know, we just got to be ready to play Manhattan basketball. And again, I'll, I'll say it, I'll say it again: the brand we played, the product we played, 
13 to 17. I didn't like us in Columbia. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't love us. I thought we were okay. I liked our ability to pull out a win, but I didn't like our product per se. Um, I really didn't like us against Fordham. I didn't like us against Siena, and I didn't like us at Fairfield. Um, and two of those games we won, and I didn't mm -hmm. like us. So, you know, I, I think that kind of says some things about us. Quinnick Biak and, and um, you know, uh, GW, I thought we were, we were pretty good for most of the night. Just couldn't get it done. They were a better team on that night. I'm not giving that team credit. But as long as we stay doing what we're doing, play harder, talk more, and we got to understand what the other team's thinking, how they're preparing for us, and what they want. We can offset those things. We we'll always have a chance to win the game. Nationally televised game Friday night here at Dratty Gymnasium, 7 o'clock on ESPNU. Don't forget, though, you can listen to live audio on GoJaspers.com. Myself, Smooth Williams, will be on the call for that one. As always, if you'd like to ask Coach a question, you can tweet us at GoJaspers. That was the best emails. question we got. He takes the naps. That's his, yeah, that's I, I love that. Stuff like that, that's fun. Yeah, that's it. That's all we got. Who wants naps? That's, Who takes the best naps? That's the only one we've gotten. Okay. So You can also email us, GoJaspers at Manhattan.edu. Don't forget, you can follow Coach on Twitter. At Steve underscore Matt Sailor, coach. Always thanks a lot for the time. Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks for joining us inside Manhattan basketball.